Switch Insert 2 is an embroidery studio level software. You have a great deal of capability and a very affordable price with respect to digitizing, editing, and lettering. So let's look at the program window and see what this is all about. First, you have the three modes, digitizing, lettering, and editing. And by clicking on one of those modes, the appropriate tools show. So you're not buried in the sea of icons and tools. You're actually only working with the tools that are relevant to what you're doing at any given moment. So for example, you have full lettering capability with a uh, choice of up to about 72 fonts, including um, script fonts, uh, block fonts, and uh, and uh, your uh, typical times type fonts as well as uh, multicolored fonts. You even have monogram fonts as well. So just kind of picking one of these. Um, so um, we can take a script font, for example, and just kind of type that in. And we can set the size we want to. Let's say the customer wants that in an inch high. And um, you can adjust the spacing. And for example, this works for script text because now this allows um, this to look like a continuous cursive. Pick our color. And uh, finally fill it out with stitching. You, all, you also have uh, numerous other effects that are available to you where you can alternately arc the text, um, kind of editing this so you can alternately arc the text. rotate it around to different locations for a good uh, a range of custom looks. Other envelopes give you different shapes so that you can uh, do all kinds of uh, effects again to give your customer a, a great deal of uh, customizability options. And of course you can select text, uh, rotate it um, just like you could in, the, in all the tools that are available in the Editor Plus level. In addition, you also have the ability to use HyperFont with uh, the Studio package, which allows you to import your computer fonts as well, which in turn adds them to the list of fonts that are available to you uh, in addition to the pre-digitized embroidery fonts. Okay, and as far as uh, digitizing capability goes, uh, you have a lot of options as well, including in the digitizing tools, um, traditional digitizing tools for fill satins and writing stitches. Um, and uh, demonstrating that, we can bring in some customer artwork by uh, uh, going to import image. And you can see that the program imports a wide variety of digital formats, especially the most common at JPEG format, which most uh, customer artwork is going to be in the form of. Uh, bring it in. Um, and we'll select this particular piece of artwork. And you can size that to whatever your final embroidered size is. So when you trace this artwork, then it's actually going to truly sew out um, at that given size. And you can see from our inch ruler that that brings us in at about 5 inches by about 3 inches tall. You can also measure that. Let's say, for example, your customer needs that to be an exact size. You can see at the bottom the, the width is about 2.5 uh, inches wide, and, um, and which is a typical left chest size logo, which was our in intent in, in boarding at this size. So once we have that set up, you can um, basically just start by tracing around, and it always helps to zoom in and just start drawing by clicking. And you can go clockwise or counterclockwise and setting your points. And as you draw, you notice that the program is actually now um, following you with a curve everywhere you click. And notice I didn't get it right the first time, but you can adjust the shape and the curve as it follows you so that it actually conforms to your customer's artwork. So you can basically rough it in like I'm doing, and then clean it up as exactly as you need it to be. And of course, for your customers, you want to give them really good quality artwork. And um, you notice that I'm also doing this on the fly without having to switch into any other tools, which makes Stitch and Sew a very friendly program for drawing and digitizing because you can get started and work uh, as efficiently and as cleanly as you want to, or you can go back and edit this on the fly so you don't have to worry about getting it perfect the first time. It's so easy to get it right. Um, just take a few moment, extra moments to adjust. And finally, we're ready to fill that shape in. We can uh, um, go into to stitch it mode, letting us set the stitch angle. 
and then where that shape starts and stops. We can even set that color based on the color underneath. So instead of making this this color, we can make it the orange that's uh, underneath. So by picking this, let's get out of digitizing mode. Let's make this color that orange instead of the red. You'll see we'll do that with the purple too. So now you can see the stitching on top of that's the same color. Going into realistic view, you can see our stitching. We'll hide the artwork underneath, and you can see how. Uh, we're doing, and we'll go ahead and draw the other shape exactly the same way. And if this was an exact copy of this uh, shape, you can also even uh, copy, paste, and mirror, but in this case, this is sort of a complementary shape, so we'll just have to draw it out, which is okay. You can see how easy it is again to trace this, and again, adjust on the fly. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to overlap into the white and just sew two white stripes on top of that um, to complete our design. So we're just about ready. And again, we'll pick our color. This time we'll do them in advance. Hit stitch it, set our angle, starting and ending points. You can see now we have the second part of our artwork. Now, we'll go ahead and zoom in closely and trace a satin stitch on top of uh, this to complete our artwork. You can see the two shapes that we created below. And this time we'll use the column tool, which lets us draw satin stitches. So again, we're tracing in a slightly different way, uh, training the satin stitches to go back and forth and follow the angle that we're doing. Um, just like traditional count, uh, point and counterpoint digitizing in a lot of uh, high-end embroidery systems. So now we have our satin stitch. And if you see that in realistic mode, you can see what that's starting to look like as it's uh, becoming a nice looking logo. Now I could at this point copy this and then paste it on top. And let's see how well that works. Is that we can actually select that. Maybe I know this is going to be a little bit smaller. And you can see it can almost work out. And then you can always edit that and bring that to match your artwork exactly. So in this case, this works out really nicely. Set your pairs up. And hit enter, and we've got our edited shape too as well. Oh, and it looks like we missed the target up here. But again, editing makes it easy for us to make small adjustments like this until we have perfect artwork for our customers. That's looking much better. And we could go on to clean this up perfectly, but you get the idea of how quick and easy it is to do simple to medium logos. And you can see we've got the logo just about done. And then um, for text, we don't need to draw the text. It's just like a regular text. Just go into our lettering and uh, pick a font. It looks close to it. This one looks pretty close right here. And let's see if we can match that exactly as we as exactly as we can. See if we can get the height right. And then let's reduce our spacing. So you can see the process. Of matching our font and our shapes, uh, it's pretty easy to kind of line all this up. So that's pretty good. And you can actually see that um, 
once we've created the stitches on here, if you really want to get perfect, you can go in and adjust the individual letters if you want to. Basically clicking and then uh, shaping the letters to exactly the font if need be. And kind of hiding the artwork, you can see that we've digitized our customer logo in such and so. Now let's see it one more way. Let's do it. We can do all that um, also automatically. So let's, uh, we can move this aside and let's go back to our artwork here. So you can see how we did that by hand. And let's uh, show our image again. And this time we're going to do something called magic wand. So in, instead of drawing uh, the shapes that we did, we can just simply click. You'll notice it's traced it. We don't have to draw it because we have nice clean artwork from our customer. Hit stitch it, and we've got it in stitching. Now in this case, uh, this is not going to draw the overlap shape that I did, but let's go ahead and, and do the magic wand again because it is such a time saver. So we've drawn our shape. Hit stitch it. We can adjust our angle if we want to, just like we could uh, with the the more traditional tools, but we can also, in the case that I made, if I wanted to combine these two shapes, is go ahead and um, go ahead and look at the outlines. And you have the ability uh, to fully edit what the computer did for you in case you want to make your own style which in this case we're choosing to do. You can see by hitting enter you've got our you've got that uh, done very quickly. And then we'll do our overlapping satins. Now in this case, rather than draw that out uh, from scratch, we can go in and you can see what we've done already here in, in the little film strip at the bottom of the object list. We can just copy these pieces. and then paste them and zooming in really quickly here we can also match that up so that it aligns just like we did the uh, manual digitizing. So you can do any combination of manual and automatic digitizing to get your customer custom logos done. So that's digitizing and stitch and so both the manual and automatic way. You also have photo stitch in here and uh, let's go ahead and do that which is very easy to create a dramatic custom uh, image for you, for you or your customer uh, with just a few clicks and we do that by going to photo stitch and selecting an image and usually this works really well with portraits so let's go into our images library here and to show you any kind of the portraits. So that usually uh, you want to do something about four by six or larger. And uh, we'll just uh, pick something, uh, a, a close up of a face as a demonstration. And just follow the wizard through. And uh, you want to generally pick satin stitch. And this works really nicely in black and white. And uh, make sure, again, you've got at least about four by six inches or so. You have a nice contrasty face with a lot of detail. And basically just finish it out. And this will actually do this uh, in a single step. And if you look, hiding the image, you have this uh, done nicely in a black and white photo that shows. And then you can even do special effects like uh, do, do your text and do some kind of script lettering on it uh, to really make it punch. So that's our a demonstration of CompuCon's Stitch and So 2 Studio software for digitizing, lettering, and editing.